The following presentation was recorded at the Upstate Carolina Linux Users Group and is licensed under a Creative Commons Share Alike Attribution 3.0 USA license. For more information about the Upstate Carolina Linux Users Group, please visit uclug.org. <laughs> I blame Ubuntu. <laughs> <laughs> Never had this problem on Arch. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Well, I'll, let me, I'll just start talking about this and I'll let me try my, my Windows trip and see. <laughs> then, um, so, what I've brought here is a, it's called the Rep Rat, which is moniker for rapid prototyping or replicating rapid prototyping and it's a technology designed to be easily reproducible with few special purpose parts that you know, most of the parts that go into it are very generic uh, you know, threaded rod, smooth rod, pieces of plastic that you can make on one of the machines itself or in this case it's uh, pieces of thin plywood that are cut with a laser cutter. The only special parts you have to have are the electronics and stepper motors. And then, you know, those are fairly, fairly widely available. Are the electronics yeah. based on open platforms? They are. They're Arduino, kind of thing? Yeah, they're Arduino based, and all the, there's a uh, there's just an open hardware platform for all the electronics that anybody can can make the circuits and. Very community driven uh, area. Okay. A lot of this is just photographs I took documenting my, uh, my assembly process and You know, I had 
I found some of other designs to kind of use as a guide, but you know, of course the parts were different, and you know, but I kind of muddled my way through, and it, it seemed like every every step of the way, by the time I figured something out, then like the next day I would find the website saying how to do what I just went. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, this little piece right here took me about two days to figure out. And in fact, that this little part right up here at the top is what broke that the, over the weekend. And um, this is upside down, but this is the, the part that sits on the, and moves back and forth across the x-axis. And the, the filament feeds in, you know, in, in this orientation, it feeds in up through the bottom. And then feeds in through that little white plastic ring goes in and it comes out the nozzle on the other side of that wooden piece. But, um, you know, just, I mean, I had all these pieces in there, but I didn't know how they fit together. And, you know, I'd never seen, I'd seen one at the shows and, you know, sort of knew more or less how they work, but I'd never seen all the details of how things fit together inside. But I don't know if that's, I don't know if that's, I think that's, yeah, I think that's a bad thing. Look, it's the cable or the laptop. I mean, it's why to say laptop, unless I manage to break it by taking it out of mine, okay. which is possible. I break things a lot. Yeah. But anyway, um, so, you know, it, it just took, it was a really frustrating experience putting it together. Um, but fun at night. It, yeah. <laughs> well, it was fun. It was fun. Having done one, I could, you know, I feel like I could get one of these kits and put it together in, you know, fairly short order and <coughs> come up with something that works well. But you know, there were several things, and well, in fact, this is good illustration of one of the things I've run across in this. You know, this happened over the weekend, so you know, Sunday I sent them an email saying, you know, they had a new design for this that was made out of stainless steel and wouldn't wouldn't break apart. And I said, you know, don't ship me one overnight, but I'll, I'll pay for it. Just ship it to me, and haven't heard back from them yet. You know, and, and that that <coughs> one of the complaints about people about this particular company, you know, that they they are uh, they have good stuff, but there you know there are some faults with it like that, and but that their, their communication, just in general, you know, with not having any documentation or anything like that, their communication skills are fairly poor. Uh, but, you know, and that's just one of the, that's one of the things you kind of, like I said, I mean, that's one of the trade-offs is you get an easy kit that has everything together, but you have to deal with people who, you know, who don't respond to the same emails. And they do eventually. I mean, I've, I've gotten back in touch with them for earlier problems, and you know, it took you know after about a week, I finally got in touch with them, and I've been I asked them to ship me something, and called back and they hadn't shipped me, shipped it. And I said, well, can you ship it overnight? So they said, yeah, we can do that. So I sent them the payment, and uh, next day it wasn't there. They hadn't shipped it. You know, and so they finally got they finally shipped it out the day I was supposed to get it. So, um, you know, but on the other hand, there have been some times I've you know, written in and asked them how something worked or how it was supposed to be attached. And, you know, and sometimes they would answer right back and get, you know, sometimes not. But, um, but anyway, this is, you know, well, this is what you see over there. I mean, I'm not going to show you that. I mean, this is everything I got in the box. And this was something I printed out off the internet, which is a different you know, one of the plastic plastic models. It just has something to go by. Um, you know. So it was just you know a lot of parts and a lot of things to figure out. A few instructions. And I went around and made you know I made a few modifications. <coughs> on my own. Let me see if I can find one here. This is. Uh, Back to it. Now this is the feed mechanism. This is looking at it in this orientation filament comes in the, the bottom and goes out toward the top and that 
that bolt has a, you know, they call it a hog bolt, and it's just a series of uh, almost like threads ground into the side of the bolt that rip the, uh, the filament to keep it in, just push it in. And then this, all of these bolts sticking out the front have a piece of plastic that has another bearing on it that you know, holds pressure against that bolt to keep the pressure on the filament. What I, you know, I, I mentioned in the uh, in the mailing list that you know over the weekend it broke and I made a few things to put it all back together but I hadn't had a chance to try it out I and mean, I was I, mean, I was putting it back together and loading it in the car and driving it away <laughs> this afternoon and uh, I got here and it's it's not uh, the heating element isn't heating up so in the course of all that. You know, messing around with that thing, I've probably broken a wire loose somewhere. It was it was reading good on the ohm meter, but you know, maybe for whatever reason, it's not working. It's not heating up now, so I'm not going to be able to. I'll be able to show it, you know, moving and stuff, but I won't be able to show any actual parts being made from life. Here's here's some more pictures of the part. This is the extruder, you know, that's, this is a Teflon tube that the filament goes into, it's just there to reduce friction, you know, so it'll push in smoothly. And then this end over here is, they call it the, the hot end, and it has a heating element that's either resistors or a micron wire and a temperature sensor. And those feed back through these wires that you see over here on the side. And that's this is just the attachment to hold it in place. So what is the construction material? What kind of plastic is that? Um, now this part right here was came with part of the kit. It's made of ABS plastic. The material that I've been using is called PLA, which is polylactic acid. But you know, then other parts like this is just a, a piece of oak wood. You know, and that's and all you know, all of the other parts you see on there are cut out of uh, you know, <coughs> plywood. Um, but uh, I mean, the, what what do you what do you print? Yeah, that's the, the PLA. Is the polyacrylic acid is, is what it prints with. And I had a coworker ask um, and whether you could use chocolate. Yeah, I have, yeah. Yeah. see that. I have seen them. Made a 3D Can you really? Yeah. I've seen a, I've seen a picture of one that uses cake icing, oh, and they they have like a syringe, and they use air pressure, you know, and little solenoids to turn the air pressure off and on to turn to start it heating and stop it heating. Someone else made one that prints with sand. I would not eat that. <laughs> I was there back in 96 running floor when I was back in school. So, so it has come, come a lot because we've got bulk parts down to a little ledger, but they've come out pretty professional, you know, so that much. One of, the, one of the things that I ran across with this was uh, on the, let me see if I can find the picture. This is this is called the X carriage. It's the part that moves left and right across the material, and it has you know all these bearings. On one side, you have three sets of bearings that anchors it that way, and then the other side, you just have two that keeps it from flopping up and down. But that way, there can be a little bit of left and right motion on the other rod without without effect. But these bolts over here, once you got the the rods in there, you couldn't get to the back side of the bolts to tighten and loosen them. And so I ended up getting, in fact, here's another another picture. And then looking at the back of them, seeing that once the rods were in place, you wouldn't be able to get to them. So uh, I ended up getting some of these, some of these at the hardware store. And they, they just thread in and leave you a metal thread, you know, machine thread that you can screw into. So I, I use that.
put us in a few places there. And then one other, other thing I had to do was think, think about it wooden ears to go on stepping motors. And I broke one and it turned out that even the other ones would slip real bad. And, and, you know, I have a, a laser engraver at work, so I made these little things in the, on the laser engraver and just stacked them up. And it be fine. There we go. Uh, I can find a better picture. There we go. So I just stacked them up you know, with some uh, double sided tape between them. And they've been working great. <laughs> and they have, you know, and they have the little key, the little uh, for the flat side of the shaft, and uh, so they don't slip. Now this company, Skip, is, this is invited, right? I would really say it's more like Alfred. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I mean, and you know, it, it's <clears throat> once I started, you know, I contacted. I started asking around the news groups, and one fellow broke the baggage with the University of Philadelphia. He has a, a lab, and they have four or five different machines. And he said that was, you know, one of the things his experience with this company was that they will, you know, they'll make design changes, and they don't tell anybody. And then so you get a kit, and the parts you get are different from things you find on the internet and how you put them together. And, you know, and so it, I mean, I've, I've been finding over and over again. I mean, this. Everybody seems to have the same problem with these people that I've had, so it's not it's not just my experience. But, but you know, still, it would have been a lot rougher if I'd been going and getting all the parts individually and try, you know. And plus, one thing with going with a company like this is they ship you the controller board that already has the firmware pre-configured for their configuration. Because if you don't do that, you've got to go and learn learn the firmware and set everything up in it to match like how many millimeters or revolution of each motor turns and all this stuff. So it's it saves you a lot of trouble but you know you run into some other problems too. So it's kind of it's one of those trade offs. Is the firmware open if you want to make changes? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. This is the extruder put together and mounted. Um, you know, a lot of this you can see on the machine itself a lot better than I can show you in these pictures. Um, so it's the platform that controls the line axis. Right. The uh, yeah. This in fact, this is the un the build platform actually sits on top of this, and they call this a frog. I guess because it's got like little legs. But it, this moves forward and backward and then so that's the y axis and then the x axis moves left and right and then the, the x axis moves up and down for the z control. But you also have to put in uh, you know like end stops so you can't really see it that well but right here there's a, a piece of metal and then over here is an optical switch that when the when the little metal flag comes out and interrupts the signal so you know you're at that limit of travel on that on that axis. There, you know, of course there are three of those. These are the electronics. Um, <coughs> this is the board that has the firmware in it and it's the main controller. It's powered by a USB which is, has a little USB to the RS-232 converter right here, or 485, I'm not sure. And then it talks to this board, this board runs the extruder. So it runs a stepper motor that feeds the filament in, and then up here it also feeds in uh, the heating element and the temperature sensor, so that it knows when to turn the heat off and on. And then these down here are the stepper motor controllers for the X, Y, and Z axis. I think I think everyone that's ever been built has been different. You know, they're, they're the different ones you need. <laughs> um, these are a few parts I made on it. This was the very first part I made. It's it's a spring for one of the models that's completely made of plastic, um, and it's used for the, uh, the build platform so that you can make sure it's completely level. You know, it's just 
rights of resistance to levy. Um, this was supposed to be Stephen Colbert's torso, but uh, <laughs> it got up about there. And one of the other things, you know, the, the software is also kind of like leading edge stuff. Well, the program that works well with this machine does not do the translation from the shape files to the build codes very well. And there's another program that I haven't gotten installed yet that does it better. So you can use this other program to make the build files and load it into this program to plot it. And so I have loaded this with, with this same program. Out of about you know a quarter of an inch and it just started going off toward infinity for the uh, leaving the trail of plastic behind it. So <laughs> anyway, I didn't get that part made. And I made a couple, actually I made four or five of these, but I gave several of them away, little stars. And they're you can see down there over there, they're hollow on the inside. And these were some fan pulls, but I don't know why the design was made like this, but it's made in two pieces and you have to glue them together. So, you know, I don't think that's that great, but it's just a piece I made, so I kept it in the picture. And, and then these, these pieces are over there too. These are something that can sit on top of it and support a rod that has bearings to put a, a reel for the film material so that it will paint smoothly. Because otherwise, I mean, even with this thing, I have to now and then I pull some out so it doesn't bind up. <coughs> oh, well, here's here's my postmortem. Uh, so that's that's the piece when it fails. see what's supposed to happen there where the film comes in through the, the rear side and comes down and shoots out the bottom here. But, um, yeah. Hopefully next month I'll come back and I won't I won't talk about it. I'll just have it sitting over in the corner and it'll be making stuff during the meeting and y'all can look at it while it's working. such a, a long exposure to get the um, because it wasn't real bright condition so I was having a hard time getting photos so that's why I took several pictures. Oh I was doing better than that. <laughs> <laughs> dig it out of there. So once I dug out the plastic and I took the pieces apart that had broken, that's, that's what I ended up with. And you know, this is, you can't really see it that well. But the wood is actually charred around this, around this uh, heating element. And that's, what, that's one of the design flaws of this particular design, that even if this hadn't happened, it would eventually burn the wood enough that it would have just pushed it out burned up the threads and we just pushed it out the bottom. Um, so like I said, he does have a new design of stainless steel. So, you know, I guess tonight I'm here to tell you mostly about trouble, but another time I will show you something more. This was, uh, this was what I made with those threaded inserts I talked about earlier put the screws in from the front and I'll have to, I'll have to get to the back of them. Uh, <coughs> so 
little details about, I put them on some of the websites, so if anybody knows where other people look at, uh, I think I'll just kind of close it off there. And not, I don't want to discourage people from doing this because it's, you know, it's a, a lot of, a lot of tedium really to, to, to get it put together and it's, so I think every, every new generation of this design they come up with, they, in fact, this one's already been supplanted by probably two or three more designs since then. And they have, for instance, they have one now that has the, the mechanism that feeds the plastic in, sits on the table beside it, and it has a long uh, Teflon tube that goes over to the motor, to the carriage that moves. And so it's just, you know, it gives you more, more distance on your z-axis if you build something taller and uh, you know less weight on the x-axis for it to move around so that motor doesn't have to be as stressed so you know they're 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 it's evolving all the time and you know, there are new new ideas the show is it's all oh, 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 yeah. yeah okay and so the software the one i'm using is called rep snapper it, is just standard C code and has to be compiled and snaps and pulls itself off the platform and you're, you know, which is, you know, a plus to that side. With this one, I have to kind of peel it off and, you know, get like a spatula or something underneath it and get it out. It sticks pretty, pretty well. Um, as long as it takes an easy to screw up. About five minutes. And that's, that's getting generous. Uh, I mean, really, it's, it's ready for getting I usually wait five. You have here you can load. Let's see, let me let me find it. Like this was that uh, Stephen Colbert. But I don't know if anybody doesn't know why I had this. They had one of the guys with one of these projects on his program about a month ago, and and so they made. You know, they had made one of these on the program. And several people had come up with some little variations on it. Like one of them had his head on a, a donkey or something. I don't remember what that was. <laughs> <laughs> several people had come up with some other variations on that. So I just, I tried to make that, but that was the piece that, um, like I say, convert to G code. That's 
see where the other guys are. I think that's just because I'm doing good. They have the edge of the screen. It's like Homer's system. It's still, I used to know. It's a solid paragraph. Okay. This, this will show you this little yellow line that's running out. That's, that's the line that it hit when it was building, you know, and it just started hitting off. So, but that's one of the things that you have this other, the other program is called uh, Skying Forge, and it will, uh, it handles converting these straight files to the cheat code, which is the building code, a lot better. And so you can use that to build, you know, to do this function that I just did where it says convert the cheat code. And so rather than loading an SDL, you can just come up here and on load G code. What is this one? STL is a 3D file format that basically has got a bunch of tetrahedrons in it, so it shows you what's solid and what isn't. G code is code that is used in NC machining. It's, uh, it's a, basically a programming language for things like and then for uh, automated milling machines or uh, just got, printers and so yeah, it's got lots of commands. Both of these are standard languages. So both of them are standard languages that are used in the industry. Yeah, so like here's one that has some comments on it. Like it's the, the M104 is defined as a set temperature command. And then the, the S200 just tells us what value to set it to. Uh, the G92 is a, is a set extruder. So a lot of these G, G's with the numbers after them are uh, are G codes, and those numbers are defined to be certain things. They don't, the number itself doesn't really mean anything. You have to look it up in a table and say, okay, number 92 you know, means set extruder. Uh, T is a tool selector. In this case, you only have one to select. Uh, and then this right here is whole program that this G1 is is to move and print, you know, gives you an X and a Y and then a, a filament, uh, an amount to run the filament. Uh, and then in between layers they'll have one that you know, raises up the X axis and plots more on the you know, Z axis. So I, I don't know, you know, other than about what I've told you, that's about all I know about the G code, is just that these values are are specifically defined to do certain functions and the parameters after that depend on the functions. Is that okay, my specific part, okay, in my part. It's pre-programmed. You did do the programming, right? It's pre-programmed for that part. There's a there's a website called Thingiverse, T-H-I-N-G-I-P-E-R-S-E, -E and that's one of the repositories that people put designs that they've made for things. In fact, that little gear that I made out of the plastic that I stacked up, I put that on there, you know, so other kids, so uh, oh, everything on there is open. So it's community run. Creative okay. Commons kind of okay. stuff, and, you know. How many parts are on there? I have no idea there are lots. I've, I've gone through and kind of done some cherry picking to uh, you know just the ones that I thought might be interesting and so I've got you know, you know, maybe 35 or 40 of them here on the uh, Take the computer over there and, and hook it up and get it on the machine. And I'll, you 
know, get it going, just going through the motions of doing something. I'm apparently, you know, since it's not heating up, I can't get it to actually do anything, but um, just to see, to see what it looks like. And like I said, I'll come back another time and, and actually make some stuff during the meeting. I'm sorry it didn't work out that I could do that this time. But. That, I've got a roll of 50 pounds of it. It's about 50 pounds. I'm not 50, 5 pounds for about 50 pounds. How many, um, whatever size of the media, I know you mentioned the media. Those are the only two that I'm familiar with. Okay. Now, there are some people who are looking to uh, to try to figure out a way to, to shred old Coke bottles, salt drink bottles, and extrude with that, which would really be cool because you'd have just about unlimited supply of material. Yeah. I don't think they've got any working yet. And do they have like any, um, like I know I've seen some of the other three printers that have, uh, you know, like uh, insured head upgrades or different types of heads you can put on it. Okay. Yeah, this one, there, there are some people who have made a head that actually has two different types of material. They have like an ABS oh, and a DLA cool. and, or some other water. The reason they do that is to have a water soluble material because when you're printing it, if you come up like this, you can't make a T-shape because when it comes up and comes out the side, when it started trying to make here, the stuff would just fall down. There's nothing for it to land. Right. And so what they'll do is they'll build it in stages and build up some filler material on the side so that when you come up here, there will be something there for it to land on to continue building. And then this filler material will be water soluble. And so they can dissolve that out. Um, you can make a Y shape. You can have you know about a 45 degree angle going up. And in fact, when you make small holes in it, they come out kind of teardrop shape because they're round on the bottom and they taper up at the top because they just can't go straight across like that. That's just one of the limits of the, the technology. And look at a standard four pole separate motor. Yep. They're, the, the ones that I've seen are six wire where they have a center cap on each yep. set of coils, but you don't use the center caps. You don't use four wires. The little stepper controllers have adjustments on them. So you adjust it for you adjust the current for the particular stepper you have and the how much force it needs to make and, and try to get back without getting too hot and all that stuff. So. And how much calibration is it going to do? I know it's like you build your own and you have those variances and everything. Well, even with this kit. I still need to go through like I think what I think what broke my uh, wooden block wooden block on the extruder was that I noticed that when it was feeding material in, it was kind of you know it was kind of doing like this. It was it was uh, it's moved some that other times it wouldn't move. And so I turned up the current on it and it started moving more. And I think what it was was I was just pushing stuff in there too fast and it just exploded, basically exploded it from getting too much pressure inside. It had been working before I did that. <laughs> but it's just one of those things, you know, I didn't, it never occurred, the repercussions of what I was doing didn't occur to me until after, until after I was figuring out what happened. Is there a logical reason I made it out of wood? Well, for uh, thermal uh, isolation. But you, did you say there, they've got one now that's metal? Yeah, they have one now that's made out of stainless steel and it's got some kind of big heat sink at the top of it. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming it takes more power to keep it heated up because there's so much more heat being drawn away from it. But, uh, I've seen some, some messages from people who have it. They said it works real well. So, before I don't have to worry about more, when you get into wood, you can undo even as far as the lid goes, but when you do it solid metal, it can need an even amount of heat in the same pressure area. Plus, you're under the factory, you need heat to make pressure. the resolution of that you can like compare to some of the other open solutions like the major bond, okay, something like that. This one is supposed it 
if everything is tuned, you know, adjusted and calibrated right now, it's supposed to be more accurate than the, the Megabot, and it has a bigger build, bigger build platform. Um, mine is not that accurate yet, but my belts have a little bit of slot in them, and, you know, so it's, it's not, like when, if I draw a box, the edges are do not line perfectly up with each other, so I, because I haven't gotten all that adjusted right now. <coughs> What dimensions can it turn to? Uh, 200 by 200 millimeters and 100 millimeters tall. Things like probably close to eight, eight, eight by eight by eight, 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 eight or something like that. Anyway, I'll, I'll hook it up and you know, have it have it going through the motions anyway, so we don't see that. People are going to get and, motion sick. Uh, and uh, decompress and, and unpack stuff. And it is, I, I, I must admit, I, I was a big fan of TAR, but I got so tired of getting, uh, you know, having to do the, the TAR T first and then, okay, I need to create a subdirectory and all that. And, and uh, it's a very, very yeah, nice spring cool utility. Uh, ECO is in most of the repositories. That are this was. It had actually started failing at this point. Yeah, so we can use some topic suggestions if anybody has some idea or a presentation something they want to, what they've been doing and like to share with the group. Just uh, you know, send out an email to the list and what you have is something that you need to see, but maybe somebody else is familiar with it and set up this. Side thing with Android. You remember how? Now, can you print Jason tensor than this? Is, um, can, you, can you print tensor than this? Yes. Oh, you can. Okay. Uh, and that's one of the settings on this software, and you, know, you can adjust you know, how much, how dense you want it in the center. Uh, but that's I, I just haven't gotten around to messing with that yet. Yeah, it's just yeah. a copper yeah. piece. Yeah, maybe we can do something like uh, that. That is a point of the end switches when it gets no, or, right. Um, when it gets over here, so it comes it goes in thing. there to, uh, See, to limit the, the motion. An Android application for helping manage the uh, event. Something that might be an order of registrations. Uh, something that could tie in with a combination website, Android app, where you can go in and. 